What a day it was at Adelaide Airport. Arriving to meet the citizens were John Lennon, two other Beatle regulars, and Jimmy Nichol. Paul McCartney was on the beat as usual. Jimmy, of course, was deputising for Ringo Starr, who had been too ill to travel at the same time, but was coming along later. I see you. Paul, what do you expect to find here in Australia? Uh, Australians? You're going to be surprised. Do you have any acknowledged leader of the group? No, not really. <laughs> have you been practising up your Australian accents? No, Carl, we're not at all. <laughs> we can't get it, you know. If there are only three things you could do in Australia, what would they be? Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know, really. But... <laughs> Go on, <laughs> well, I've been talking all the time. Uh, and first of all, I think I'd like to tie me kangaroo down sports. Yeah. <laughs> then, well, some of the Yeah. Are you individually millionaires yet? No, no. that's another lousy room. I wish we were. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Epstein a millionaire. No, even he's not one, poor fellow. Well, Where does all the money go? Well, a lot of it goes to Her Majesty. <clears throat> <laughs> She's a millionaire. <laughs> Everywhere in the world, the Beatles get the same welcome. Now over to Sydney to greet Ringo. The arrival of the number one drummer, you can see why he's called Ringo, brought the Beatles up to full strength. Thousands more girls made happy. The koala bear showed with that Aussie wise, Ringo's with it. On now to catch up with the rest of the group. So Adelaide laid on another reception. hotel they had to come onto the balcony. These intercontinental Mersey Beat missiles have hit Australia for a pop six. Before long they'll be sighing for new worlds to conquer. 